Thank you very much, uh, dear chairman, dear colleagues. Um, I have taken uh, a perspective of about five to ten years, and I want to show you the ideas that will be matured by, uh, by that time and the ideas that are already present. One of the main topics in gastrointestinal endoscopy is the measurement of human performance of, as uh, a doctor, as an endoscopist. And uh, we have validated some of the human performance measures. This is the, for example, adenoma detection rate. And this is a parameter that shows how good is the endoscopist. And it translates into a very important and validated um, results for the patients treated or diagnosed by, by this doctor. If you have 1% higher adenoma detection rate, and the range we have endoscopies now is between 15 to 40, 45%. So there are different good and bad doctors and medium. So if you are 1% better, then your patients have a 3% decreased risk of uh, colorectal cancer and 5% decreased risk of colorectal cancer death. So what we think and we need in the future, we want to have the automated information about our performance and outcomes of our patients. And this information should be available not only for us and to be kept secret, but also for the patients, for, for, the, for the lawyers, for, for everyone to judge whether the human performance of a given doctor is good uh, or not. The other idea that is already starting is the optical diagnosis instead of histology to allow the quick uh, decisions and decrease the costs. Currently, we are working on a, for, for this idea for the small polyps, but also I think this will be available for the, for the other lesions as well. It should be quick and reliable, reproducible and operator independent, of course. And I want to show you that already so-called computer-aided diagnosis is available. And uh, as you can see uh, uh, from the paper in gastroenterology, the analysis allows you to uh, say whether the lesion is neoplastic or non-neoplastic or adenoma, what is the confidence, the level of confidence and the probability that the diagnosis is correct. And to show you this, I want to show you this small presentation available already in gastroenterology. If you can click, please. Yeah. So this is the paper by, by, uh, uh, published already, and there is a link to that movie showing how it looks in real life. Invasive cancer, probability 99% or 54%. Another polyp. Okay, sounds also plays a role. Uh, you can uh, hear joyful sounds or sad sounds, so it will also inform the endoscopist whether whether the diagnosis is joyful or not. Um, so this strategy may replace the current routine polyp evaluation by resection and sending for histology. And if the optical diagnosis is perfected, we can just resect and throw away the, the polyp what for if we have a, a confident diagnosis, or we can ignore the lesion or send for histology. So I think this uh, already is, uh, studies are available. On the left side, you can see the optical diagnosis using MNBI have selected 233 neoplastic lesions as opposed to cancers and advanced histology, and this in all cases was correct. So, of course, uh, this is in the specialized center, but we need to have it more, um, uh, better data and on a larger number of patients. So, this resect and discard strategy is really need, needed because during colonoscopy we have, we have hundreds and thousands of polyps. If we want all of them to examine 
or uh, it takes time, it takes money, and we really need uh, to, to progress with this idea. But of course, the legal issues must be solved, and I hope by five years' time it will be solved. Another idea in the endoscopy is using the third space. The third space is the uh, space between the submucosa and the muscle layer. And to show you that it's possible and easy, I want to show you the POEM procedure. We are in the middle of esophagus, and it, it's very easy procedure, very safe, uh, as you can see. Uh, we just first inject a lot of fluid to make the third space between the submucosa and the muscle layer larger and larger and larger. And then we enter this, this space by cutting the mucosa uh, in the middle part of the esophagus. And because we are cutting through the water, watery um, uh, sp uh, space, it's coming quite easy. There is a lot of uh, connective tissue, very soft. We are cutting that. Um, on the right side, you can see the muscle layer. On the left, there is a, a submucosal layer. Um, the video doesn't project very well. Anyway, we, we go down and we make a tunnel within the esophageal wall and allowing the whole endoscope to enter inside and we go down, this is the muscle layer, we go down, down to the lower esophageal sphincter. Um, going down, going down, now you can see this tunnel. This is within the esophagus wall, we are inside. And this tunnel um, allows us to cut the muscles at the lower esophageal uh, sphincter. This is in the cases of patients with achalasia, which, which cures the patients. And it is, um, uh, well, let's say, very little invasive procedure. Then, of course, we close, close this, uh, um, the, this defect. I can show you just that we are closing with a bunch of the clips and the patient is, uh, is, uh, is cured from this, uh, his achalasia. But the idea is already present. The procedure is very safe, but the idea is that we can use this third space, so be below the submucosa and above the muscle layer, to, for different reasons, for drug de delivery, for uh, removal of intramural lesions, for biopsying nerves and muscles, for placement of different uh, diagnosing, monitoring devices, uh, and also some, some other ideas. The picture is not very good because the entrance to the third space should be far away, like 10 centimeters from the place where we uh, are going to act because this tunnel makes the procedure safe. You just close the entering, which is far away, from the area of treatment. Another idea that is already present, this is the intra-endoscopic evaluation of drug binding uh, into the tumors. And this is the uh, animal uh, study from Nadi Rarber group showing the uh, uh, binding of the monoclonal antibodies in the nude mice. But it, it will be possible, I'm sure, in the near future to allow, uh, evaluate that in humans treated with uh, oncologic drugs. Also, uh, the um, uh, current, current uh, capsule endoscopy is very well, but it, it takes a lot of problems for patients. You have to uh, clean properly, and it's very difficult, especially in the large colon. You have to prepare yourself for about three days. So, um, and uh, these, these capsules make uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, photographs within the, the uh, intestinal tract. So the idea is to use the prepless capsule endoscopy that is not doing pictures, but is sending an X-ray um, uh, signals uh, to get the X-ray information, and it can go travel through the stool, through the uh, through other fl fluids, and can have uh, the, the pictures very, very well. So if you um, if you oh, sorry. So you, you can have this picture and reconstruction. It doesn't work. Okay, anyway, you, will, you can reconstruct the wall of, of the bowel and, um, 
it's uh, okay. Other improvements are the notes, which already is present. Natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery. You go through the wall of the stomach and you can remove the gallbladder. You can uh, repair the hernia and other, other things, uh, providing you can close safely the uh, stomach wall. Telemedicine uh, should be available for endoscopy as well. Probably flexible endoscopic bariatric surgery is slowly entering the scene and also EUS guided procedures will develop further uh, to, to perfect uh, the better access and treatment for many patients. So in conclusions, the future endoscopies will have a great help from the advanced technologies and the automated processes. However, as my previous speaker said, the clinical wisdom and knowledge will be of course needed and I think even more than today. Thank you very much.